Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Creating 2D Games with Game Maker. This is the Advanced Techniques session. I'm Natalie. And uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, I'm a developer evangelist in Southern California. Um, I've been doing uh, game development for about two years now. Um, before that, I was a traditional, you know, run-of-the-mill enterprise developer before joining Microsoft. But about two years ago, I decided, hey, it'd be really fun to build a game. And so I uh, hunkered down and uh, learned how to develop games. Uh, I built a game called Dave in the Cave. Uh, it's uh, 20 levels of uh, cave fun. Um, and it's on all three platforms. So whether, whether you have a Windows uh, 8 phone or whether you have an iPhone or an Android, you can get in on any of those. And uh, I had a ton of fun doing it and I uh, want to share some of that fun with you today. Cool. Uh, I'm Natalie Golovornis, also a technical evangelist, and I live in Dallas, Texas. So like Daniel, I work with students, startups, and game developers. So I've been at Microsoft for about two years now, um, also with a focus on game dev, so before Microsoft, I did have experience working at some other game companies, but I wouldn't have really considered myself a developer. But recently at Microsoft, I published my first game called Mysterious Mushrooms. Um, so you can check that out. It's very mysterious. Also, yes, very mysterious. And, and lots of mushrooms. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice, nice. So uh, the, we're glad you can join us today. Um, you're watching this on MVA, and I think it's really important to actually join the MVA community. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. You can get points. There's leaderboards. Um, so while you're uh, doing this and while you're checking this out, make sure you uh, check out the MVA community and sign up. You can see the codes on screen for that. Um, remember that it expires 419 to 15. So uh, you want to make sure you do that. Um, some of the resources that you'll need for today, uh, Game Maker Studio, of course, uh, uh, there's a free edition, um, and I think everything that we're showing you today, you can do in that. Um, we're going to be working with Spine today. So uh, previously, we created characters using Inkscape, which is a great open source uh, program to create 2D uh, animations and stuff. But uh, today, we're going to take those sprites that we created and, and work them in Spine. And so uh, go ahead and download Spine. And if you're just jumping into this session today and haven't seen our previous Game Maker session that we recorded a while back, uh, go ahead and uh, check out that link uh, that you see there, aka.msgmmva1. And you can see the uh, previous one we did, which was a little more basic uh, game maker stuff. You want to share the agenda of what we're doing today? Yeah, Ellie? we've got some fun things planned today. We're going to start um, doing scripting your game using the game maker language, and then we'll do animation using bones and spine. After that, we'll look at advertising analytics for your game, so how you can get some Make, revenue. Making money and find yes, out what, how people are using it. all that really yeah. awesome stuff and how you can look at um, all the revenue you're getting from that. Um, then we'll look at optimizing for Windows 8, so touchscreen controls and saving data um, in the Windows Store as well. So we'll take little breaks in between each of these things, about 10 minutes here and there. So. Cool, cool. So let's uh, jump right into the uh, first module. So uh, in this module, it's called Scripting Your Game uh, Using uh, Game Maker Language. Uh, and just to preface it, the goal of this uh, section is not really to teach you Game Maker Language in 20 minutes. Uh, that would be like trying to teach you C Sharp or JavaScript in a 20 minute session. Um, but it's more to uh, get you situated with how it works in Game Maker, um, give you some pointers, give you some places to start. Um, Game Maker actually has a nice tiered uh, way of uh, using GML language. Um, you can use it as just little pieces in your game, or you can script your whole game in it. So uh, that's our goal in this section uh, to give you a taste of what the Game Maker language is about. You don't need any programming experience, right? Um, you know, that's a good question, whether you need programming experience or not. Uh, I would say if you have absolutely zero programming experience, um, I would use the drag and drop. Game Maker is great for uh, that. Drag and drop still has some of the constructs of um, how uh, programming works with the, the loops and the variables and stuff. If you have zero programming experience, um, the GML part of it might, might be a little tough if you're par starting from absolute scratch. That's so, good to know. Yeah, so um, to kind of bring you into where we were, so the, the first section uh, or uh, modules that we did a while back, and again, you can see the link to it, um, we walked through some of the basics, um, how the IDE works, um, how uh, sprites work in it, how objects work in it. We modified a few rooms. And so we, we kind of dove around and got you used to the IDE. So again, if this is your first time in Game Maker, go check that out, because we're not going to go back. Um, in today's sessions, we're going to uh, uh, dive right in. 
Um, and so in this one, we're going to talk about learning to use GML and variables in GameMaker. And then after that, we're going to jump into uh, state machines. Um, and so we want to start with uh, learning uh, GML. So I already have the uh, GameMaker open. So the interesting thing uh, about GameMaker language is uh, Mark Overmars, who uh, created GameMaker a long time ago to um, uh, work with his students so his students were able to uh, build games easily. Um, originally had it as drag and drop, and then he added GML as an afterthought, the GameMaker language as an afterthought, um, to do some tiny advanced stuff. But GML has actually taken over. One of the things you'll notice if you uh, go to the forums, if you're looking at um, getting help in the forums, is most people out there are doing uh, game maker language, so they will uh, be able to help you with game maker language. There'll be a little less help if you're just doing pure drag and drop, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, let me show you a game to start. Um, let me see which one I have open. Let's go to uh, this one. I'm just going to run it um, so you can see. You know, when I'm showing you code, uh, it's not as, as dynamic. So you can see when I'm doing stuff, what's happening. So you can see I have a little character. Uh, goes left and right, goes up and down. He can jump. Um, there's platforms here. I like that little tree. Climbs up. Yeah, yeah. I like the little rope. Actually, I like the little skeletons yeah. when you crush their head. I mean, we could just do this for 25 minutes if you want. <laughs> see how good I am. Um, but that's, that's the game that we're looking at. So when we're looking at code, it's something tangible. It's something, uh, and this is, it has three levels. But let's go ahead and uh, open a version of that, because I want to compare the two. Um, this is uh, almost this. This is the beginning of this, and I'll show you the room. It's, it's kind of uh, the beginner stages of that game. And the reason I want to show you this uh, in today's session is kind of do a comparison. You'll see me do this a couple times um, as we're going through it today. Um, if we look in the room itself, um, you'll see that I have a, a little guy in there. And let's do uh, Alt-1, Alt go down to the bottom here. You'll see that. In this room, I have a uh, object uh, player uh, drag and drop. Now, that's because this individual player, this object over here, my main guy in the game, has all his actions, all his events, everything was done by dragging and dropping. So if I look at uh, the create event, which is what happens when this guy is instantiated, again, uh, even if you're doing drag and drop, the beauty of this is you're learning uh, programming stuff, you're learning instantiation, you're le learning uh, variables, you're learning uh, width, you're learning a lot of stuff. So you can see that I'm creating variables over here on the side to set sp image speed, to set image index, um, the set is health to 100. Um, over here in the step, I'm using an if statement. So I'm checking to see if uh, position is collision free, et cetera. When I go left, I'm going to jump left, et cetera. But if I open up the player drag and drop, um, you'll see a couple things. Oh, sorry, wrong player. If I open up the player uh, that has the GML, you'll notice that I still have um, all the events over here. And this is a really uh, interesting thing. This is what I meant by a tiering in GameMaker. Um, you can uh, learn the code very slowly in GameMaker. Um, you can pattern how you do it in drag and drop and just do little pieces of code. You'll notice over here on the right hand side when we have controls, um, in the drag and drop you saw the move controls and um, jumping controls, the sound controls, room controls, but in the control tab itself, there's two different things under code. One of them is going to execute a piece of code, and one of them is going to execute a script. And if I drag that on there, um, you'll see that it allows me to call a script. Now these are scripts that you'll find over here in your scripts folder. Um, so you can take uh, a piece of code that someone else has written or a script that someone else has written that will enhance your game um, and make it that much cooler. So this is like the, the baby step to writing code where you can actually call a script but you can still tell it's, it's still kind of drag and drop. You have to know a little bit of scripting because you need to know the arguments that are in that script and, and what to call. But um, it allows you to kind of take that baby step. Um, the next thing though is just execute a piece of code. So if I click on here, 
this, this guy isn't that complex, but you can see just like the drag and drop, um, I'm setting image speed, I'm setting image index, and the speed is uh, how fast the animation in the object is going. Um, the index is uh, what index to start it on. So if there's, the animation is made up of four or five different things, which one do you want to start on? Zero would be the first. And you can choose that to be whether he's you know, standing straight or his legs up in the air. Uh, you decide, obviously, playing it on the character. But you can see I can write code to uh, write these variables in here. So not much different between the two yet. Um, again, you can look at a, uh, the uh, step event. Now, the step event, uh, if you haven't uh, done a game before, the step event is your game loop. Um, this is going to run uh, 30 to 60 times a second. Um, so this one's checking to see, basically, if I'm in the air. Um, it's checking to see if place is free. Um, and it's checking my x coordinate and my y coordinate um, are right under me and see if there's anything under me. If there's not, it's going to uh, uh, set gravity to 0.5 and it's going to drop. Again, uh, in this section, we're not going to be talking about every little piece. What is, how does gravity work? How does place free work? One of the cool things, though, is like many other programs, um, you can uh, look at pieces of code that um, are color coded. So uh, these these things are um, code that is. Uh, I'm sorry. The yellow is code that is part of the Game Maker language. Uh, this red here is code that is uh, reserved words. Things like gravity and stuff are reserved words, so they're uh, colored differently. But if I want to know how this works, I can just hit F1 to go to the help, or if I hit F12, it'll actually take me right to um, that one, and so I can look. I can see an example. Um, you know, more usually they're a little more uh, ex explanation here than this one, but this one's pretty simple. Um, if the place I'm looking at is free, then I want to do something. And you can do that with any uh, code that you find in there. Okay, let me um, jump into a little bit more complex. So the stepping stones are just calling a script. You can write GML just calling a script. Um, the next one is You'll notice that I have um, things here for uh, going left, going right, uh, and, or going up. And I have script in there, and it's a very simple script. Um, if place is free, you know, set my V speed, I want to move to the right or the left, etc. And so that's the second step. You're still kind of compartmentalizing them um, by doing them in events. You're just writing code for them. You're not getting uh, much benefit doing it this way. Um, because the benefit you're, you're going to get is it's a little easier to read and write code than it is if you have a ton of drag and drop things in here. But if we take it one step further... Uh, you can also mix the two, right? You could do some things, drag and drop, and some of it with the GML, right? You absolutely can. And actually, um, when I first wrote Dave in the Cave, um, I did it originally in drag and drop. Uh, and um, as it got more and more complex, the drag and drop functions got more complex. And I shall show you that really quickly. This guy's so simple um, that I can see everything that's going on here. But a complex game like Dave in the Cave, if I did it all in drag and drop, this keeps going down and down and down and down. Yeah. It's, it's hard to keep organized and it's hard to um, re uh, really remember what's going on and, and it's hard to jump to a certain place in your code because I can, I can search through scripts, um, but I can't search through drag and drop. Um, yeah, so those are, those are some of the trade-offs uh, that you're going to do. Um, but there's on the flip side of that, there's not much you cannot do in drag and drop that you can do in GML because uh, the drag and drop actually at the end of the day spits out GML to run mm -hmm. the code. So it, it's essentially the same one as so the covers. So you can get by with drag and drop, it'll just be a bit more tedious. Absolutely. And there's optimizations you can do. And actually let me show you um, a little bit of Dave in the Cave. So you saw the you saw the uh, step event for that other game. If we look at the step event for my game, You can tell, and I'll just page through here, there's a lot more complexity. What's going on every uh, 30 times a second. Um, there's, what, 200 and 300 uh, lines of code in here. And if we just kind of look at, at what's going on, I'm uh, doing things like I have a, a joystick. Um, and let me, actually, I think I can show you what that is. 
And we're going to talk about uh, touchscreen controls uh, oh, later cool. today. Uh, but I'll show you, uh, just so you can connect what I'm showing you in code to the game itself. Um, we'll go ahead and run this quickly. If it cooperates with the <laughs> not responding, it comes up quickly. There it is. So I split my screen in two. So you can see I have wherever I touch on this side, there's a joystick control, uh, up, down, left, right. And on this side, actually, um, if I you know, would touch it, it makes them jump. Um, I've also been able to, I can use keys as well. And I think I use the space bar for this. So the same code works whether I'm using a keyboard or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to show you that to show you the... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, to show you what code we're actually looking at. And I think it minimized down here. There we go. And so right here, uh, I'm uh, checking an object that's outside of here. You know, things mm -hmm. you can't do in just drag and drop. Um, this is an uh, object uh, uh, joystick. Uh, and that's the joystick is sending me back which direction I'm pointing. Um, and depending on which way I drag it, uh, it's going to tell me either uh, left, right, up, or down. And from that, I'm just doing a simple switch statement or a case statement.